Ram, Ram, okay, from the Mahabharata, you know this book, the Indian book, okay, he is uh, he's tired of war and bloodshed and he is looking for paradise, so he is ready to shoot a magical arrow, unfortunately it lands in the water, so he gets the god of the ocean to take the water out and that is supposed to be go. Now, we are land of many rivers, we have five major rivers and in these rivers is all development came and go. Okay, the villages were located on the river, villages came up from the river. And uh, you know the rivers, the first one is the Pirakol, then Shapora, then Manduvi, Zuari. You've been here many days now? No. Okay, you know anyway. Okay, so uh, the we have also historically uh, developed our land. We have filled up the land to have rice fields. So we cut the hills a bit and uh, did lots of reclamation of the swamp. Okay, now the Goan house before the coming of the Portuguese developed in a very introverted fashion. It was a house which was put around the courtyard and uh, in this courtyard everything happened. Okay, because the woman of the house remained inside the house. She wasn't really allowed to go out so much. Now, uh, the village was located above the flood plain. You know, when it rains a lot, the river can rise by so much in one, in one hour sometimes. No, it, when it rains here in India, in Goa, it can rain four days continuously. So the river rises, so all the houses are put a little high. And uh, Goa, we have had many, many visitors coming to Goa historically. The most interesting man is, is a Chinese flotilla which came here in 1407. Okay? Uh, he came all the way from uh, Nanjing, came right up to, he landed in Goa with a flotilla of 162 boats, very, very big boats. They could seat 500 people. And from there, he crossed it across to Africa. And he was gifted two giraffes. And he made the hole in the boat, and he put the giraffes in the boat, and he took them back to China. It's a, it's a very interesting story. And these, this is the picture of a silk screen of this giraffe in China. The next great travelers to India were the Portuguese. The reason they were coming to India because the price of pepper in India was one hundredth the price of pepper in Europe. So they all dreamt if I can get a ship to India, fill it with pepper and take it back, they'll make become very, very rich. So they arrived here in 1498. Okay? The uh, green one was the voyage, okay, it was Vasco da Gama who came, and uh, after that Goa was conquered in 1510, Goa was the first colony. Many people were trying to come to India, Christopher Columbus was trying to get to India, but he went on the wrong direction, <laughs> you know, he went this side, and uh, okay, now these are strange maps of India, prior to the Portuguese, prior to these sailings, this is a map in 1486, where uh, this is supposed to be India, the shape is not right at all, but it's written here, you know, indo gangetic plain, Ethiopia, all this, but they don't know the shape. And this is, once the sailings were complete, the shape has appeared by 1513, and uh, it's not correct, but there's some shape. This is a Catholic map from France. Uh, yeah, it's Catholic, I mean, Christian map and where the world is shown as three islands ruled by the three sons of Noah. This is supposed to be Europe, no, no, uh, Asia, Europe and Africa. Okay, so that's how they looked at it. Uh, this is the uh, Vasco da Gama, the first man who found the route and he came in these little boats. These boats were 20 meters long the Chinese came 95 years earlier in boats which are 135 meters long. Very, very large boats. And these ones came in four boats, of which one caught fire. Okay. 
the first thing which the Portuguese did when they conquered Goa was build the biggest churches outside of Europe were built in Old Goa, mostly on the site of temples. They wanted to show that they would be here forever. Uh, now, when that church was being built, I'm just showing you examples of other buildings built at the same time. Okay, this is the Taj Mahal is a little younger than the last church that you saw. And uh, this is St. Basil's Cathedral from Turkey, it was in Japan. All about the same time as that church in Old Rome. The houses which the Portuguese first built when they came here were along the river before Old Goa. And they were large houses, double story, uh, the kind of model which was used in Portugal at that time, with many small rooms, many, many little rooms, very romantic kind of buildings, uh, which, uh, okay, uh, they, all these buildings changed after some time, I'll explain to you. This is, we, see, once the Portuguese arrive here, they make us Catholic. If you want to stay in Goa, you must become Catholic, or you have to leave. So, some became Catholic, some left. And uh, we uh, took Catholic names, and uh, we all have Christian names now. Okay. Old Goa was one of the biggest cities, port city, the, the biggest port city in Asia. Because the Portuguese controlled the whole sea uh, trade in the Arabian Sea. So nobody could sail without paying money to the Portuguese. No uh, Muslim could travel to the Middle East unless he to the to the Hajj, where they all went every year. They went for pilgrimage unless they paid the Portuguese. So Old Goa was a big port, and this is a picture of the market in Old Goa by a Dutch artist. These are a few pictures of that period. Okay, on the left is a very funny picture I found uh, from a museum in London. It's pirates of the coast. Goan pirates. And they all have a little turban with a red tassel. They wear a little loin cloth. And a few of them have guns and the rest have bows and arrows. Okay, this is a, a Portuguese lady uh, welcoming a, a, a diplomat coming from Gujarat. Uh, this is a, a Portuguese doctor who lived here who, who was an amateur botanist. So he had a garden where he grew spices. And when he was in Goa, he wrote a treatise on cinnamon. You know cinnamon? Yes. And he published it in a paper in Paris in a scientific journal. And he's now called the discoverer of cinnamon. He used to live here. And he used to go around with a falcon in hand with many servants behind him. Uh, this is St. Francis Xavier. St. Francis Xavier is, uh, you have been to Old Goa? Yeah, and you see the casket of the body. Uh, St. Francis Xavier was a secret weapon. He uh, hardly lived here, but he died and his body was passing by. And we kept the body here because the body was not getting spoiled. And if anybody could attack Goa, we would take the casket to the wall and they would run away. You know, it was like that. He was. It was uh, his body. It was a miracle. Everybody was scared of, of this uh, story. Okay, now these are the houses which first appeared in Goa. It's a double-story house, which the Portuguese uh, brought the design. The it was a model which was good for Portugal because the horses used to be kept down and the heat of the horses used to heat the house. Uh, we have become Catholic. We were interested in this house, but we didn't find it so good. And we didn't want any heat from below. We were hot enough, you know. So uh, that's another kind of model of the same house. So we took this house. We had been living in a house very low, very much down on a courtyard with not ventilation. So we we mixed the two models to form what we I call the Indo-Portuguese house. It's a house only on one level. Uh, it has European features, uh, but with Indian motifs. Okay, like it may have this design, but in the woodwork or in the furniture, they put Indian motifs. A balcony was added on, because the balcony was good for the monsoon. It rains a lot. 
So it's a space, uh, transition of space. Plus the woman of the house had come outside the house. So this was a, a place for the whole family to sit in the evening and fool around. You know. uh, goals were very migratory. Under the Portuguese, uh, nothing much was happening after a certain time. So we went with the Portuguese to work in Africa, we went with the British, we went everywhere, sent money to build big houses and also sent ideas. So you'll find very strange, you'll find <coughs> Eve's board which is very British, uh, a dome of window which is French, you'll find a star of David. You know, it just became like some kind of uh, party of different forms. Okay, and this whole uh, thing which had been set in motion affected Hindu house. The Hindu house and the Catholic house both started looking at You know, it, it permeated and Portuguese were here for 450 years. But when the house was small, when it was large, there was always a balcony for the family to sit. The house was very important for Status in Goa. So people built private chapels. Many had ballrooms. If you were a big landlord, you had a ballroom where there was a part like this upstairs where the band used to play. And, uh, okay. and uh, there was stenciling in the walls, there was elaborate furniture. It was more a kind of. Goans are very status conscious. They are full of. I mean, you, maybe you don't know so many, but if you look at old world ones, they're full of uh, etiquette and manners and, you know, the older people, you know, so houses were like, you know. But what I'm talking about is actually in the core of Goa, where the Portuguese first conquered. When they first conquered, they made us captive. When they conquered the rest of Goa, they had already stopped making us captive. It rains a lot here, and uh, you know, one of the keys to live comfortably is to have good ventilation. So uh, this is very important. So windows often had openings right to the bottom, and uh, at the top of the roof you had holes. On the roof you had a, a cowl tile, and you had this for the hot air to get out. The rain also is very heavy, so you have to have a sloping roof. And a courtyard is very important because the hot air gets out and the air comes in. Our material is laterite. Laterite is what you see here. It's a, a rock which is made out of the earth. It's just, uh, it's got iron and aluminium and it's very strong. We dress it with this and we build the wall like that. Uh, the most important symbol of Goan's house is the balcony. Okay, the Balkan is <coughs> put up there with many steps. In fact, it's very funny. If you go to a village, sometimes one house has seven steps, and the next house will have eight steps. That will have been nine. And they go on like this, you know, getting higher and higher for status reasons. But the balcony is always very beautiful, and in axis of the gate posts, which have pinnacles on them, or lions. And uh, everybody wanted to have their own little design, so they different ones. And uh, strange, slightly abstract ones too. Uh, in the, back, the columns of these houses were what we call clustered columns. They're made out of stone, but they seem as if they are a uh, number of columns put together. And uh, the tiles are the early tiles. Early 20th century came from Marseille in France. Uh, some came like this is a funny tile which uh, is made here. There's somebody from Mapsa, the next one, who went to Germany, brought back holes and he started making these tiles. So you find this tile here and you find it in Leipzig, the same design. Uh, China is also a very important part. Uh, when the ships used to come from uh, China, uh, to balance the ship, there were sacks of broken tire and they got off in the port and people started putting it in their living room floor. Uh, if you, uh, if your family was in Africa, you would put zebra, hobo bird, if your family worked in a sizer plantation, you put sizer. So everybody was, was freaking out in, in uh, these floors. Uh, the railings were first made out of 
are stored, people don't have to put their names on the railings. Uh, then wooden railings came up, very delicate, and then finally cast iron. That's the last railing which took uh, Very delicate, they're like lace sometimes. Uh, the cast iron railings are often painted with the colors and they never get spoiled, the cast iron. Uh, windows, nobody wanted to have the same shape of windows. Everybody had their own little design. And uh, the size may be the same, but the design is different. False ceilings were made out uh, were very important because in the tile roof it rains and water gets in and the rubbish gets in. So there was a false ceiling of two kinds. One was solid one and one was one with with kind of perforations. The perforations are normally made in white, so you didn't see the millions of spiders and cobwebs behind. <laughs> Furniture, it's very interesting. These designs are with European shapes, but all the detail is local. <coughs> like uh, these ones will have mango flowers, cashew nut, local. But the European one will have a garden sleeve or whatever. Uh, people painted their houses also. <coughs> the Hindus painted with mythological scenes. <coughs> the Catholics with stencil. They <coughs> put stencils and paint. Shell windows. You see, this is oyster shell windows. Glass came to Goa only 130 years ago. <coughs> but we still wanted to have a window, a brass bed window. So we picked up this shell on the beach, cut it up and slipped it into the This is the Tulsi. Tulsi is an important Hindu religious symbol. It has the basil plant in it, <coughs> which is made with oxygen. So uh, because we were ruled by a Catholic state, the Hindus started building this bigger and bigger. So they became like no temples. Okay, so you would find in many Hindu houses this symbol. Uh, this is my second last slide. This is uh, the state of many houses today because in the earlier days the eldest son got the house and everybody else had nothing. But now the house is equally divided and they fight for the house. But many, many houses are being transformed and uh, being prepared and become hotels or boutiques and there is a great revival in these houses. Okay, so this is uh, my understanding of the story of the golden house.